When Melba Beals was a young African-American woman, she was a part of the Little Rock Nine. This is a group of nine African-American teens that entered Little Rock Central High School in 1957. They were trying to help the process of desegregation in schools all across America. So your escort's name was Barry. Did he give you any advice? Yes. He told me that in order for me to finish the school year, I had to become a soldier and to never let anyone know what I was feeling. I also had acid pouring in my eyes, and I was stabbed. And if it wasn't for Danny, I would be blind today. He told me to avoid bathrooms and hallways, and he saved me another time when someone threw a stick of dynamite at me and he told me to duck and I survived. Did Danny's advice help you at all? Yes, his advice helped me finish my junior year of high school. Um, what did you experience every day at Little Rock? I had to endure people kicking me in the hallways, punching me, spitting on me. A lot of kids called me names, and shoving, and this white boy poured eggs on my lap, and I went to the bathroom and I cried for half an hour. So you didn't graduate from Central High, where did you go after that? 
I moved to San Francisco to finish my senior year of high school. After that, I went on to college at San Francisco State University and Columbia University. After that, I joined the end of When you were younger, did you think you would excel in writing? I never thought about it, but to this day, I feel like, I, yes, I did. I wrote two books. My first one, Warriors Don't Cry, was about my experiences in high school. And my second one is White is a, is a State of Mind. Were you ever married, Diana? Yes, I got married to John. And I had a daughter with him, and we got divorced afterwards, and then I went on my own, and I adopted my two sons, Matthew and Evan. Although what Melba Beals endured was rough, she continued, continued her life and became very successful. She became an author, journalist, and an inspiration to many people.